Okay, welcome to your Google Classroom tutorial on how to use an iPad and an iPhone with Google Classroom. Okay, so what you're going to need to do is on your iPhone, which I have got one here, okay, you need to look for the App Store. Now, if you are using a Android phone, then you can use your own App Store. These apps will be in there. Um, I don't know what format it will take looking for them, but you should know how to download your own apps from your app store. Okay, I only have access to an Apple phone, so that's the way I'm going to have to teach you with this. All right, you're going to need to ask your parent or carer's permission in order to download these. They don't cost anything, but if your parents have got settings on your phone that need them to approve things, then you're going to have to ask for help. Okay, so the first thing that you do is you go into this App Store app or whatever it is on a Android device, okay? And then in the search, you search for Google Classroom. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so I've already got this on my phone or I already had it. So all I need to do is hit the little cloud. You'll have a button there that says get. So you just need to click on that, okay? So let's download this, there we go, and out we go. Okay, while that's downloading, we need to find some other apps as well and download them. So I need Google Drive, okay. So Google Drive, it looks like this, and you're gonna wanna click Get, okay. And then we need to search again for Google Docs. You're going to need all of these in order to, whoops, Google Docs in order to get your um, work being able to upload it and download it and write on it. Okay, so you need all of these apps. So there's your Google Docs one. So you have got a little app there, same deal, you'll have get, so you need to press that. Okay, next one, so is Google Slides. Okay, so we look for that one. And there you go, so you've got Google Slides and you need to hit get with that. Okay, and the last one that you're gonna need is Google Sheets. Okay. All right, and there's your Google Sheets with your button to get it. Okay, right, once you've downloaded all of those, we'll carry on. Okay, once your apps have been downloaded, they should look something like this. Okay, so you've got your classroom, which will give you all of the different assignments and things that your teachers have put onto the classroom for you. All right, you've got Docs, which is your Word document. Okay, then Google Slides, which is PowerPoint, and then Sheets, which is Excel or, um, or Spreadsheet, okay? And then this one is your Drive. Now, none of these cost anything. Um, I will say that the Drive has got a option for in-app purchases. Now, that's only if you want to buy extra space. You shouldn't need extra space, and if you do, all you need to do is delete old stuff please ask your teacher before you delete anything, because once you have deleted it from your drive, it not only disappears from your drive, but also your teacher's drive, so they can't mark whatever it is that you've done either. Okay, so please, please ask your teacher before you delete anything from the drive. Okay, so let's get started then. So we'll go into classroom. Okay. And down the bottom here, you've got a little thing that asks you if you want any updates. So I'm gonna click no. Okay, and then you need to click on get started. Okay, once you click on get started, it asks you for your school email. So you, this is your Higham Lane school email. So I'm gonna put in my fake student account here. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to hit next. 
Okay, and then it wants your password. So I'll put my password in. Okay, and once you've put your password in, you need to hit next. Now these are, this is your username that you used when you logged into the Google Classroom at school um, in your IT lesson and the password that you used with your Google Classroom. Okay, once you put both of those in, then you hit next. Okay, now it asks you if Classroom can send you notifications. You need to hit allow for this because your Classroom will send you notifications about what your teacher has put on. So if you've asked them a question, then their answer will come up as a notification. It will tell you that there's been a new assignment or there's been something added to the stream for a class or that your teacher has responded to your message. Okay, so you must really hit allow here so that, your so that it comes up and lets you know that there's something new. Okay. Right now, I'm going to look at this 11C class because that's the one that I've used for this demonstration. So we'll click into that. Okay. And if you look up here, you've got a little A. So if I click in there, that shows me my account. So there's my account. You can click manage your account. You can add other ones, but you shouldn't need to anyway because it's all school stuff. Okay. So we'll click back out of this. Okay. And into the 11C. Okay, now I'm in here. You can see that there have been lots of things posted. So your teachers will put information on here for you. There can be attachments to documents. Um, you can, they can put things like new material, assemblies on Zoom live teach lessons. Um, for my particular lessons every day at the end of the day, I will put on here what it is that you have missed. Okay, so that if you're absent, you can get caught up and you, when you return to school, you don't feel like you've missed out on anything. Okay, and you can carry on with the rest of us at the same point. Okay, right. So once you've had a look through that, then there's a button down the bottom here that says classwork. So in order to look at your assignments, you need to click on this classwork button. Okay. Now, these are all the assignments that this teacher has put on for the students. Okay, so you'll see, always you'll see your virtual classroom there. So if I click into that, then I can access the virtual classroom here. Okay, so that I can use the knowledge organizer and whatever else is available on the classroom. Anytime you want back out, you just click on the little arrow. Okay, and it'll bring you back to the previous screen. So we're going to have a look at this task here, Bon Travail. So if I tick on to the writing task, okay, what you get here then is a reminder of the due date. So due 27th of September at midnight. Okay, so every, every assignment is generally due at midnight on the day that it's set, unless the teacher has changed it. So please look at this because sometimes it's something like four o'clock in the afternoon. It might be three o'clock if it's a cover lesson, you never know. So you do need to look at that and make sure that you get things in on time. Okay. The other thing is this where it says writing tasks. So you have got your task there and the instructions for what it is that you're supposed to do. Okay. So if we click on this button here, okay, then it brings up a rubric. Now this is here sometimes, sometimes it's not. If you click on this, it tells you how many marks things are worth. Okay, and if you click into one of the specific things, so on this little arrow, then it tells you exactly what it is that you have to do for each of the marks, okay, in order to get them. Okay, and the minute I want back, all I need to do is click this arrow up here and again. Okay, now in order to access your work, you need to look down the bottom here. So you've got your work and it's coming up as missing and that's simply because this task was set for the class on the 27th of September, and I'm making this video on the 2nd of October. Okay, so it's missing. Right, so if I want to see my work, so you click onto your work, okay, and then it brings you up. You've got your rubric again that you can click back into and see, okay, or you can click onto this, which is your actual task. Now you'll notice that the task has already changed names and it's got my name in the front of it, okay? You don't need to rename your task. It will already have your name and then the original task that your teacher has set, 
Okay, right. So if I click into there, then what you get is a Google Doc. Okay, now, sometimes it will ask you to go out of here and to go into your Google Documents. So you might have to go into here and sign in, right? If, you, if it does ask you to sign, if it does say it's, there was an error or there was a problem, then just click into your Google Docs app like I just did, click sign in, right? And continue as the person, okay? Now, if you look here, this is quite a useful screen. So you've got, you could search in documents. So you could put there what it is you're actually looking for. You're able to work offline on Google Documents. So you can create and open edit recent files on your device while offline. And then obviously when you get home or whatever, then you can get back on your documents and you can upload them. Okay, so you can change it later in document settings if you want, but I want that because that's quite a useful thing. So we'll hit okay. All right, then also it tells you what's been last opened by you. I've got two of the same document here because one of them I've already made a video on how to do this on a computer. So this one is the one that I want for the iPad or the iPhone. Okay, so if I click into there, then there is my document, my homework or whatever that I've been asked to do. Okay, so you have got your name. So you can write straight on this document. You do not need to create another document. So what you need to do though, in order to write on it is go to this little pen thing down here, click on there. Okay, and it brings you up your keyboard. Now I'm going to type my name. So I move my cursor and we'll go Miss Hampton. Okay, right. So there you go, all sorted. Oops. Okay, and if I make a mistake like I just did, these little arrows up here will pull it back for you and put it back to what it was before. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's dead simple. So now if I scroll down, okay, there's my task and it says, please, let's shrink this just a bit. So please insert your answer below here, okay? So what I need to do then is put my cursor there. And if you're on an iPhone, this is lucky because you can change your keyboard. So I'm gonna click on the little world thing down here and change it to French, okay? Because it's rather annoying when everything comes up with an underlying thing telling you you're wrong, even though you're not. Okay, so if I want to answer this question here, so les secteurs de travail qui vous intéressent, I need to start my sentence with je m'intéresse. Okay, now I can do this. So I've got an option to bring it up if I'm in the French so that I can just do easily. The other thing that I could do is if I wanted to put the accents in myself, if they didn't come up for whatever reason, you click on your letter and you hold it down. So like, for example, I want je m'intéresse à l'éducation. So I would click on the A and it brings up all my different options along here for different types of A's with accents. Okay, so I'll click on that one and there it is in your task. Okay, space, and then we need l'éducation. So again, same, you press on the E and you've got all the different types of E's. Okay, so l'éducation. Okay, whoops. And if I've made a mistake, there we go. Okay, and there's the beginning of my sentence. So if I want to, I'll carry on and uh, let's go. Yeah, I'll carry on another time. Okay, so that's that. The only thing that is a bit of a, a bit problematic is that you cannot do like you can do on a computer, which is double click into this and then write over it. So that can be slightly problematic. So, but if I pull it up like this, you can see you've got present tense verbs, future tense verbs, different things that you're checking your work for after you've done it. Okay, so all I need to do there is put my cursor underneath or even before, might be a little bit easier. So put my cursor there before and I can write what it is that I actually put in this task. So let's put present, whoops, let's put present tense. Okay, 
and connectives. Oops. Okay, and connectives. So if I want to then change the color of this, because obviously it's a follow on task, so it shouldn't really be black. So I just hold down the cursor on one of the words like that, and then click select. Okay, and then I pull it up there. So I've got both bits selected and I can click on this little A here to choose a different color. Okay, and then I've changed it and we go back. Okay, so dead simple, right? Then afterwards, to do your follow on task, your teacher should add it straight onto this document and you will need to do that at the bottom. Okay, so once you have written your follow on task and you have written your task, okay, then you need to go to submit it. Okay, and also you can have a look here. So if I wanted to say highlight this, right, I could highlight that um, select. Okay, and I can change it to italic, I can change it to bold, underline, whatever it is that I want to do. Okay. Okay, also, if I want to do anything like, for example, add a picture, then I could press this little plus button here. Okay, and I would get a list of things that I can do. So I can add a link to a document or even to a website. I can make a comment on my own work. I could put an image in there, right? I could add a table, a horizontal line, and so on. Okay, right. So that's just some of the things that you can do with a Google document. And then you've got your bullet points as well down here. And this would be your spacing. So spacing in or out of the margins. Okay, right, moving on. Okay. You have also got in this corner here, three little dots. Now, if you press on those little dots, you've got different options. So you've got print layout, suggest changes, document outline, find and replace, and word count, which is quite a useful one and other things available. Okay, so the best thing to do with Google Docs is to make yourself a fake document and just have a bit of a play and see what is available to do. Okay, so if we want to come out of there, we just click anywhere. Okay. Okay, and then the last thing that I'm going to talk to you about in this doc is just this little A here. So if you click on that, then you have got all of the different fonts and things that you could imagine from a Word document. Okay, so text color, formatting, font, size, all sorts of different bits and pieces. Okay, right. So if we click anywhere, it will go. There we are. Okay, now to come out of here, what you need to do is to click on this little tick mark. Okay, that lets the document know that you're done adjusting it. So we'll click on that. Okay, and then it gives you the little arrow to get back out again. Okay, now you saw that it just was saving quickly. Okay, then once you're done that, so you come out of your docs, and then you go back into your classroom app. Okay, now you have got your document there. So let's click in that and just make sure that all the adjustments have been made. Okay, if I blow this up, you can see that I've got there, je m'intéresse à l'éducation. I've got my colored items that I've put into the paragraph. Okay, so all the changes have been made. My name is there. So that's dead simple. So then we go back out by clicking the little X. Okay, if you want to make any changes, then you can, you click on the little pen. Okay, so we're just gonna click on this little X here to get out now that we've made sure it's fine. Okay, so we don't need to add an attachment. That would be if you created a Google Doc in your Google Docs as if you were in here first and you created something, then you could add an attachment. Okay, but we don't need to do that. So we'll go back into the classroom and we'll just hit the button that says hand in. Okay, so just there. So when you hit that, it will say one attachment will be submitted. So you hit hand in and then 
your work has been submitted and it comes up with unsubmit. Now this is quite useful because you can as well, if you submitted it and then thought, oh no, I needed to do this, then you can click that unsubmit button. Okay, and then you click here again, unsubmit, and it brings it back for you so that you can make further adjustments. So you can click into it now and change things if you wanted to. Okay, so we're gonna click, I'll show you how to do the attachment thing just in case. So we click on the add attachment. Okay, and then you've got your options there. So you can add from the drive, you can add a file, you can, I would prefer it that you didn't use your camera, a new doc, a new slide, a new sheet. Okay, right, so. Oh yes, your camera, sorry. Your camera would be very useful if you're adding pictures of the documents that you've handwritten. Okay, so you can choose use your camera and you can take some pictures of whatever document it is that you've written. Okay, so fantastic piece of kit, right? Next thing I need to do is just click anywhere to get back. Okay, right, now that that's gone, okay, we click hand in again and hand in. And then as you can see, the thing says unsubmit again. Okay, if you want to add a private comment so you can let your teacher know that you've sanded something in, you just click in this box that says add private comment. Okay, so we click there and I can say, hi, miss, sorry, this is late. I'm not sure why this isn't coming up just yet. Okay, so it should be saying, hi, miss, sorry, this is late. Now, so I'm ever so sorry, the computer seems to be seizing up. Just pause the recording till it comes up. Okay, there we go. So there's the message. So hi, miss, sorry, this is late. Um, and then you... Okay, sorry about that. Um, sometimes it just stops you after a certain amount of time of sharing your screen. Okay, so we'll go back into the classroom where we were a minute ago. There we go. Okay, so there's your private comment there. So hi, miss, sorry, this is late. And you just press this little arrow, okay? And it should send that to your teacher, okay? And then if your teacher sends something back, it will come up in this space here, okay? And this is how you ask questions about anything that you need help with. Right, um, I think that's everything. If you have any questions, can you let me know via private message? Um, if it's still not working, the same goes if you let me know via private message. Um, but I hope that should clear up any questions that you've got about how you can do your work on a phone or an iPad, okay, rather than a computer. Okay, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful. Okay, bye.